STEM and STEAM education are not new, but they are once again in the spotlight, with Time Magazine's announcement of 15-year-old Gitanjali Rao as their first ever Kid of the Year. How is this approach to teaching and learning creating the next generation of leaders, innovators, and problem solvers, and what does it mean for the future of our workforce? Dr. Ashley Guess is Assistant Professor of STEM and STEAM Education at Augusta University. Thanks so much for joining us to look at this student-focused approach to learning. Learning. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. For those unaware, what is STEM and STEAM and how do they take an integrated approach to teaching rather than focus on a set of separate subjects? Yeah. So um, the, a STEM approach to teaching um, and learning is really about taking what you learn in math and science, the S and the M, and applying what you learn, the content, into a design process and then realizing an answer to that design in the context of engineering or engineering technologies. And that's where you get the S, T, E, and the M. Um, a lot of people find that, ju that just engaging in that design process is amazing to develop those cognitive skills, those life skills that we want all of our kids to, to develop, i.e. Um, critical thinking, perseverance through problems, communication, um, you know, these kinds of things, creativity. Um, however, there is a school of thought and much more um, pervasive now in the world that just a STEM approach is not sufficient. What about the creativity that can actually be more characteristic in the arts world? So you have the acronym STEAM coming out. Um, and if you subscribe to the STEM definition that is centered around design and kids designing, then it's a natural outpouring of design to either result in engineering or result in arts. And so that's where STEAM comes from. And as we were saying off the top, it really is not about focusing on subject by subject by subject. It's more of an integrated type of approach. It is. And I like to use the term integrative, I-V-E, not integrated. So oftentimes, we as teachers, regardless, kindergarten through college, we, we establish a set of plans and then we, then we take them out every year and, you know, dust them off and try to use them again. But in reality, are we teaching the same student who comes from the same background with the same influences? The answer is no. Just look at COVID. <laughs> this year, our students this year have come to us with a completely different um, set of experiences. And so a STEM or a STEAM approach should be integrative, meaning responsive in the now, not past with the ED. And it should be about leveraging all that you're learning to resolve real world problems. How often have we sat in a classroom where we look at our math teacher or our science teacher and say, when will we ever use this? What about English or, you know, a language? When are we ever going to diagram a sentence? We have all thought or said that in our life. The reality of it is that's a good question. And, and especially in a world that is so global now and dominated by technology and forward thinking and fast paced thinking, we have to be able to train our students, not just to know stuff. They can ask Siri anything they need to know. We need to teach them how to bring information together and utilize the information and be willing to pivot and persevere. That's what a STEM or a STEAM approach will do, bringing everything together. So you would think that there would be other subjects that could benefit from that approach, yes? Every single subject can be brought into a STEM and STEAM approach. You'd be amazed at the context of social studies or history and how much that, as a context, maybe with a problem, can bring together science and arts and math and um, and other other languages these are all it, it, it's just such a natural pull together of information 
Um, and believe it or not, it's a lot more robust. Um, it's so much better to ask kids to apply what they're learning rather than just spit back a bunch of facts that, like I said, Siri can tell them. Well, Time categorizes Kid of the Year, Gitanjali Rao, as a scientist, an inventor, an innovator. Is this a classic example of how STEAM education nurtures multiple interests and fosters growth in multiple areas? I love what you just said. You just said, nurturing the interest in multiple areas. And notice, she's a female. And I love that. Because how often do we just ask kids to learn what I'm telling you, do the prescribed lab, you know, and she is so much more than just a scientist. She is looking into coding. She's looking into interacting with people, serving people, listening to people for their needs and their wants and their desires and being willing to walk with them. That's the outcome that a designer will have. And, and so and, and she feels empowered. Anybody who reads about, you know, reads the interview that you had with her, or not you, but let me, hold on, let me go back. Anybody who reads that interview that Time put out will absolutely see how empowered she is. And it's the empowerment that comes along with knowing they can make a difference. And that's the key of a integrative STEM or STEAM approach because it's present now relation in relationship to what the kids want and need. And so, um, yeah, I was thrilled to read about her. She's impressive. Well, you, you take that time kid of the year and you look at doctors, scientists, epidemiologists, all at the forefront of this pandemic and heroes on the front line, powerful role models. Are we likely to see increased interest in science and technology in the future? I think we're going to have to, to be honest with you. Um, and I think, though, that the interest will not result in persistence of a wide variety of people, though, if we don't do something to change how we're dealing, how we're teaching kids in, in K-12 education. So again, the interest could start that way, but will they persist? We have current research that reveals to us the sad truth that we aren't making a dent in who persists in these subject areas. And so that's where the STEM or STEAM approach comes in, is to really empower that student like we're seeing in this amazing student of the year, empower the student in their journey so they know they can persist and they don't drop out of those disciplines. That's the key. Well, there are still some barriers to entering these fields. What are some of those barriers? Well, I think, um, believe it or not, research would tell us that math is a big barrier. That if you don't see a person who's persisting in mathematics, they will tend to shy away from staying in a STEM discipline. Um, the other part of this is computer science. Computers are ubiquitous now. Everybody's got one. We walk around with them. And yet, do we honestly know how to leverage their power? The answer is no, we don't. And we need to start teaching that explicitly to the children, I would suggest, as early as kindergarten. How many kids can manipulate their phone, but yet can they really utilize it in, its, in a way that, that makes a difference? So um, I think that early adoption of a STEM or a STEAM approach is key. And um, we need to especially, you know, bring along these disciplines that tend to lock people out and, and allow these students to apply their learning in the context of either engineering or arts. By offering both, we're going to tend to gather more people. We're going to tend to maintain those people who tend to shy away from persisting. Are there other challenges, though, to implementing STEAM approaches in schools more widely? Yes. I would say that the challenges are the teachers themselves. Because the teachers, this is a big shift for a teacher. You know, we've been trained, teachers have been trained to focus on a discipline. 
But that's not how we live every day. And frankly, that's back in Little House in the Prairie days. Has our education system really um, evolved along with the way the rest of the world has? The answer is no. And so the teacher shift as an adult is a bigger lift than a student shift. Teachers are afraid and they need us to walk with them through this process and they need real professional development that's ongoing and um, not just a sit and get type thing because this is a big mindset shift for a teacher. The other big issue is uh, administration. The administration is the, the person who stands in the gap for the teacher with the school board. They need to be able to say, I empowered my teachers to do what's right and I back them. And, and really take some of this fear away from the teacher. So it's very um, nuanced, but very important that both of these um, groups work together. And I would say that the other, um, in my opinion, the other um, issue uh, I can speak to definitely in the United States is that STEM and STEAM have become so commercialized. It's hard for a teacher to navigate and go, well, what's real and what's just not? You know, the commercialization of STEM and STEAM causes people to think that they need a lot of money to do this. The answer is you don't. Sure, would every student love a 3D printer? Yes, but that's not necessary because STEM and STEAM, an integrative STEM and STEAM approach is about mindset. It's about process. It's not necessarily about product. So. Well, further to your point about how popular it's becoming, how can someone be sure they're getting a qualified STEAM education? Yeah, well, definitely be discerning. When you're looking online, you're looking for people who actually have been trained in this, not people who have said, oh, I'm now proclaiming myself as an expert. Please understand that science is not equal to STEAM. Science is a component of STEAM. So just because you have a scientist doesn't necessarily mean that they will be able to talk with you and walk with you uh, in, in an integrative approach. In a lot of cases, that's a big barrier and, and that's where people get confused. So um, remembering that it's an approach to teaching and learning and you need someone who's been explicitly trained in in the integrative piece, not just the discipline. Well, it's little wonder it's one of the most talked about topics in education and why it should be part of every child's learning experience. Dr. Guest, thanks so much for bringing us up to date on STEM and STEAM. Thank you.